Great, thanks very much. Uh, we have time for uh, uh, one really small round. One thing uh, we didn't talk about a lot is algorithms, not in the sense of uh, two-sided markets, which is you know the next session, but <laughs> algorithm, uh, algorithms as something that can maybe facilitate collusion. What do you think about that, or is collusion in such markets as easy when you talk about firms that have teams that can check all the time what the rivals are doing in any way, so maybe algorithms just make it easier for the consumer. Do you have any thoughts about that? <coughs> I've thought about it. Uh, Ariel's in the audience. He's thought probably more about it than um, maybe other people in the room. Uh, my own view on these algorithms um, you know, people have done these experiments where they show algorithms can learn from each, uh, what the other player is playing, hit the collusive price uh, easier. Maybe that's true, but suppose it's true. How does that differ from me and I am, you know, competing for 20 years and figuring that out? It's a very uh, difficult problem, the old monopoly problem, and I don't think it is an easy solution. What are you going to tell me? To tell my programmers not to put certain aspects of code in their programs? Um, so I don't see that as a different problem than the one that uh, Don Turner and, and you know they worried about in the 1960s. And I think the solution of saying, what do you want me to do about it? I don't see how I can really solve that problem. It's probably right in the context of independent behavior. I think what it does raise, though, is when there is a merger and you're asking what is the consequence of reducing the number of people, if I think that by reducing the number of algorithms post-merger, that will lead to um, uh, oligopolistic behavior being more successful in raising price, that seems like a separate consideration that should get more attention. 